Okay, next up is uh, Alexandra Sharon from Empress Royalty, CEO and President. Royalty and streaming company with some you know, very interesting partnerships with, with Endeavor um, that gives them more special access to deals, I guess you'll be getting into. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're into stream creation as well, not exactly. just buying streams. Exactly, we create them. Thank you so much, good afternoon. My name is Alexandra Whittier Sharon. I'm the president and CEO of Empress Royalty. We're listed on the TSXV and the symbol EMPR. And we recently just upgraded to the OTCQX and the symbol um, EMPYF. Uh, we offer investors a strategic approach to investing in gold and silver. Here are our forward-looking statements. They're also available on our website. Uh, I suggest you have a read, as I will be making forward-looking statements throughout the presentation. So our value proposition. Empress, we create new royalties and or streams to get mines into production or to help them expand the production capacity. We currently have a portfolio of three revenue generating assets. We're forecasting about $50 million of revenue if we did nothing else over the next five years. And when I'm speaking, um, I'm, we're talking US dollars, not Canadian. We also have a robust pipeline of opportunities, and I'll get into that in a minute. We just put a press release out yesterday on a new, a new investment. Management and board, we have over 250 years of experience. We've completed over $6 billion in transactions. Why we launched Empress. In an uncertain world, precious metals protect wealth and offer strong investment opportunities. We the potential to create significant returns for our shareholders using the streaming and royalty model. And we also saw there was a gap in the market uh, where the streaming companies, especially the bigger ones, were doing ticket sizes of $100 million, $200 million, and no one was providing the streaming structure to the junior side of the market. And that is why we established Empress. So we offer, we deploy our capital in strategic and a patient use of capital. We take advantage of market inefficiencies to maximize returns, and we create long-term value for our shareholders. So taking a step back, what are royalties and streams? Our royalties where we invest in a company and we receive a percentage of revenue from that production, similar to what you see in the record business. A stream is where we invest in a company and we're able to buy gold or silver credits at a deeply discounted price and that we pay 20% of spot price, so that's about an 80% discount. And at Empress, we do a combination of both. It really depends on the company we're investing in and the jurisdiction as well. So royalty companies outperform gold. The first chart is showing you how the gold miners ETF, the price of gold, and the royalty index have performed over the last 10 years. In the second chart, it's the life cycle of a royalty company. We just launched this company three years ago. We're establishing a market presence, building out our portfolio. We believe with our strategy and our partnerships, we should be able to quickly accelerate to stage two rapid growth. Benefits for an Empress shareholder, you're getting direct exposure to gold and silver through the streaming credits and re revenue from our royalties. The current portfolio has an IRR of about 30%, and you're also getting access to a globally diversified portfolio, leveraging off our multi-jurisdiction experience. So there's different types of royalty companies. I think investors have a lot of different ways that they can invest into the space. There are especially a lot of new entrants in the last couple of years. There's the expiration generation, early stage, typically inexpensive, but there's the expiration risk. No guarantee it will turn into a mine. If it does, there's a lead line, uh, long lead time to revenue generation. Then there's quite a few doing the royalty uh, third-party acquisition. So they're buying an existing royalty. There's no direct relationship with the company. Uh, it's been, part of a competitive bid process and historically also low returns. We're in the creation. We have a direct relationship with the company. We work with them to provide this financing solution to them. And as we're demonstrating, we're able to really invest our investment dollars into revenue generation. Uh, why we believe creation is better. Um, we go through an extensive due diligence process in all of our investments. That's tax, legal, uh, financial review. We go to site. Uh, we have third-party engineers prepare reports. We're also able to structure the deals to be beneficial to both, as I mentioned before, but we also take security. So we really do protect our investments. And we also have monthly reporting. We're not waiting for them to put their financials out three months later after a quarter end. We get monthly reporting. I have biweekly calls with the teams. So we're very much de-risking and involved with the company as they move forward. 
So our team, uh, David Rhodes, who's here with me today, is our executive chairman, and I'll talk a little bit about Endeavour in a moment. Myself and Jeremy Bond from Terra Capital Australia are all on the investment committee. Our, Natasha's a lawyer, Paul's a CFA, Wes Roberts is a mining engineer. Our team's very small in terms of full-time. It's myself, Rich, for origination of transactions, and Caitlin, our VP marketing. Um, so we're able to keep our GNA low. Our investment manager is Endeavour Financial. I started out in the industry at PricewaterhouseCoopers. I joined Endeavour Financial as an analyst. I was director of structured finance in London for about 10 years. Um, so I teamed back up with Endeavour and David Rhodes, as I mentioned, as the managing director. Um, they've been around for over 30 years. Uh, this gives me access to um, all of their, their whole team. So I'm really able to punch above our weight and keep our GNA low. Um, I've got access to their financial analysts, their mining engineers, geologists, um, engineers. It also allows us access to deal flow and also be able to quickly vet deals, structure, and execute. So how do we invest? We look at development and production stage assets. Right now, we're really focused on production assets that will bring revenue in. Both public and private companies are where we're seeing opportunities. We are only looking at gold and silver, so we truly are a precious metals royalty and streaming company. And we're global. We're right now in Peru, Mexico, Mozambique. I just announced South Africa this morning. And we will continue to look in these jurisdictions where we've operated as a team before. Our investment size, I'm mandated up to 25 million. Right now in our evolution of growth, we're looking sort of between five and $10 million investments. And all of our investments have a strong ESG focus. Into the portfolio. Um, so I'll talk about the, the key assets that'll be bringing revenue in. We've invested $19.5 million to date into this portfolio. Uh, the first producing asset we invest, invested in was the, uh, the Sierra Antipite mine owned by Sierra Sun Group. We invested $10 million, and for that, we set up a 4.5% gold stream, up to 11,000 ounces, and that's 1% for life of mine. The annual cash flow is $2.2 million, and then asset value is $15 million. We were just at site a couple weeks ago, uh, and they should be fully ramped up to their full production capacity um, in the next six months. Then we have the Talawetto stream. This is on Luca's project in Durango, Mexico. We invested $5 million, and for that, we get 100% of their silver, um, up to 1.25 million ounces, and it drops down to 20%. The annual cash flow, when they're fully ramped up, is $3.3 million. The NAV on that is $20, or sorry, 20 million. Um, and that's using $21 silver. Um, this one, uh, they've, we invested when it was a development project. They're just getting into production now. They just hit 500 tons capacity in June. They're expecting and um, projecting to get to the full capacity of about 1,000 tons towards the end of this year, next year. So as they grow and develop um, or get into commercial production, we'll be receiving more revenue from them. We are receiving silver credits at the moment. The other one we have is in Mozambique, owned by a private group called MMP. We structure this as a royalty. We invested $3 million when they were a development stage asset. They've, uh, we've got a 3.375% royalty um, for 95,000 ounces, and then it steps down to just 1% royalty after that. Um, annual cash flow is about 1.6 million US. Net asset value is 5 million. That's based upon a three-year mine life plan, but they've got three additional satellite deposits. We expect this one to run a lot longer. And as said, we invested with development. It's now moved into production. We've been receiving consistent revenue from them for almost a year. We have a development stage project. Uh, they're probably 12 to 24 months making a construction decision. We also have an exploration portfolio. We acquired this as part of our direct listing on the TSXV as an investment company. Great to have in our portfolio. We're much more focused on revenue producing assets. So here's a look at our pipeline. Um, the first two are both in production and be helping them expand production capacity. Um, the first one for 7.5, talking about that one, um, we've got exclusivity. We're in advanced technical due diligence on that. So if that passes through, then hopefully that will become an investment for us. The second one, very happy to announce yesterday, that's with Col uh, Golconda on their Galaxy project in South Africa. So we've signed the agreement. There's a few CPs to be completed before we fund, which we expect to be in Q1 this year. That'll bring more revenue into Empress. And then there's other opportunities I'm looking at right now in South America and Africa. So our capital structure, we have a strong shareholder base. 25% of the company is owned by management and board. 35% is held by institutions and strategic <coughs> investors. Last year, Rick Rule became a large shareholder in us, both the Precious Metal Fund and Silver Fund. 
our uh, shareholders of ours, U.S. Global, Frank Holmes, and Stefan Gleason, who's a large U.S. Uh, gold dealer, just became a shareholder by buying in the market. We currently have 118 million shares outstanding. We've got just over a million cash as of at the end of June. And we have a debt facility in place. We put that in place almost two years ago. That was for $15 million accordion loan with Nabari. We drew down five of that to fund part of the Peruvian deal and the Mozambique deal. We've been repaying that debt, uh, so I've got technically 10 more million available to me right now, um, but we're in the process of restructuring that financing, so as soon as I can put some news out on that, um, you'll be hearing that. And that will give us the capital we need to fund the um, new share opportunities I have in the pipeline without diluting our shareholders. So the industry, peer comparison, looking at the sector as a whole here, we are deeply discounted compared to our peers. If you look at the price to cash flow ratio for 2024, the average is about 18 times. Even if you half that with what our revenue projections are being about 10 million next year, you can see how we have serious potential for a re-rate. Near-term catalysts. The asset in Peru is increasing its production. The Talahuedo is ramping up production, um, and they'll be bringing significant revenue in next year. And as the press release, we'll be getting more revenue and closing the deal in South Africa and expand our portfolio. So, in summary, we've invested $19.5 million to date into the portfolio. Our net asset value is $47 million forecasting over $50 million in revenue over five years, and our market cap is just $23 million US. Thank you very much. And David and I are around the conference for the next couple of days. If you see us, please grab us. I think we've got a couple spots, two spots still available for one-on-one -on -one meetings as well. Thank you. No problem. I've got, if anybody has any questions, I've got a question. If nobody else does, well, we'll go with you first. I was wondering if you could educate us, um, two-part question. If you had a choice between sticking with streams or sticking with royalties, what is the preference? Mm -hmm. It could be a balance, or is one better for you guys? And then what are the internal thresholds on, for example, on page 20, you spoke to some deals that have been in the due, in the due diligence process. I'm wondering, I'm asking myself, what are the internal thresholds that something has to pass, like an IRR or mm -hmm. what have you? Maybe you can comment on that. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, a royalty agreement is roughly 30 pages. A streaming agreement's over 100. There are much more levers and mechanics we can play with in structuring a streaming agreement. And again, with, our back, with my background from Endeavor and with the Endeavor team, they're doing you know, uh, streams for Wheaton and everyone else. So we have that sophistication that we're able to apply to the smaller side. So I do much more prefer streams um, and, and getting that direct gold and silver as well, getting the credits in rather than just a US dollar payment coming to us. Um, in terms of the threshold for the opportunities we're looking at, um, they're roughly about 30% for producing asset IRR is what we're looking at. Um, when we get into development stage, I can get closer to 40 or 50% depending on the asset and how much time I want that to mature. If I'm using the debt facility to fund these, I obviously want to make sure the revenue is coming in. But as we grow and we become cash flow positive next year, and I've got that capital to redeploy, we'll probably look at a little bit earlier stage, six months to 12 months from development, and get some stronger returns coming in. But that'll be the evolution and doing it in a slow, steady, methodical way. Thanks. Thank you. Well, my question about, like on the surface, the streaming model seems like the simplest model in the world. You know, give them some money, then buy gold for 400 and sell it for 2,000 because we we just hit 2,000 today again, yeah. nicely enough. Uh, but you know, the art I guess of these deals is in you know the exploration upside that a lot of these things have, and so you're not necessarily buying the ounces that are there. It's the hope that it's going to get bigger, and then making sure that you have that as part of the agreement. Can you get into anything about you know the upside that these streams can offer? Where you know, you can really get some torque. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we are very much investing in producing assets now. So they've been de-risked in a sense. They've got the permits in place. They've got the community relationships established. They've proven track record of getting money in and out of the countries we're going into. Um, so we are structuring them and some of ours do step down or have a limit on them because we're trying to get the revenue into Empress now. As we mature as a company, we might look at things that, you know, we've got a couple life of mimes and we're doing more of that structuring. Um, but there's, you know, there's, there's what they have on the ground and what they're reporting, and then the potential is massively there. You know, the one in Peru, it's been operating for over 16 years, and there's that typical narrow vein South American deposit that has massive potential, and we have a 1% life of mime stream on that one. Okay. Any other questions? 
Thank you very much, everyone.